Hey Internet student, welcome to the brief tutorial of statistics. My name is Matthias Bertel, I'm professor for mathematics and statistics at the University of Applied Sciences in Offenburg, and in this video I'm going to explain four basic statistical terms. These terms are not just words, but actually the concepts that we need to understand so that we can apply statistical methods properly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more educational content. But now to these statistical terms. The terms that I'm going to talk about are population, statistical unit, attribute and value. Knowing the meaning of these terms does not only help us to understand the procedure for collecting, processing and analyzing data better. They also provide us with a structure that is generally useful when planning and preparing any type of investigation. I will explain the terms using a fictitious story without any reference to real people. It is a story about Lily and her love for shoes. It is the end of the month, it's payday and therefore it's also shopping time. And actually Lily already has narrowed her choice down to four pairs of shoes. Sandals, high heels, boots and sneakers. Of which she's going to buy one pair. However, she isn't quite sure yet which of these pairs she's going to buy. Now, how should Lily make her decision? Either spontaneously, that's how she normally does things, or she considers what she finds important this shopping round. Today she goes with the what is important approach as she's here to tell us something about statistics after all. Important, however, might be a range of things and it is only for Lily to decide what is important to her. The first thing that comes to her mind is that the color of the new pair of shoes should match the color of her favorite new dress. Lily decides that this is not the case with the high heels, so they need to go. Secondly, with summer just ahead of us, Lily thinks that the new pair of shoes should be summerly as well. Boots aren't, therefore they're out too. Finally, Lily also knows that inexpensive shoes don't make her really happy. Consequently, it can only be an expensive pair. That means that it won't be the cheap seekers and Lily made her choice. But now, let's recap real quick. How did Lily actually make her decision? Lily had to make her choice between four pairs of shoes, basically between four objects. In statistics, we would call these objects statistical units. The set of units, which can be considered for an analysis, is called population. Because Lily has taken only four pairs of shoes into consideration, we could say that her population consists of only four statistical units. However, in theory, we also could have said that the population consists of all shoes that are available in shops within Lily's reach. All four statistical units are pairs of shoes. So, in that respect, they're all the same. But with regard to other properties, and these properties we call attributes, they are different. The attributes that Lily used to distinguish the shoes were color, summerliness, if that's a word, and price. However, that was only Lily's selection of attributes. She chose the ones that are important to her. If we think about the situation a bit more, we easily find a lot more attributes that relate to shoes, such as size, material, type, origin, and so on. However, that's not what Lily said, so we go with her choice. Then Lily assessed each unit, i.e. each pair of shoes, against the attributes and assigned values. So the values per pair of shoe against color are pink, red, blue and amber. Against summerliness it would have been yes, yes, yes and no. And as far as prices are concerned we only heard about the sandals and sneakers but let's just say it would have been 90, 78, 140 and 112 euros. 
And this is exactly the way we always structure data collection and statistical analyses. There are always objects which we, when we address them individually, call statistical units. All units taken together we call population for that respective investigation. Then we decide and define the set of attributes that we want to look at under a given investigation or research task. Every statistical unit will be assessed or measured against each attribute. And as the outcome of measuring them, we will assign a particular value to every single unit for each attribute. Normally, one can say what potential values, at least in theory, exist for each attribute. The values could be numbers such as 0, 1, 2 and so on, or simply yes or no, or low, medium, high. This always depends on what the attribute is. If we, as part of the data collection, do not look at all statistical units, but only a subset, we call that subset a sample. We have already noticed that it always depends on the subject of investigation, which units our statistical population consists of and what the attributes are. Lily was interested in four pairs of shoes, which she wanted to buy for herself. However, if she had cared about, for example from a scientific or economic point of view, about the quality of products available in German shoe retail, then her statistical units might still have been shoes, but now very many, perhaps all shoes available in Germany within a specific time frame, and the attributes would probably have been different. For example, quality of fabrication, material, type and so on. Or, if Lily was interested in the German shoe market, her statistical units could maybe have been various brands instead of individual pairs of shoes. And attributes might be things such as style, target group, price range and so on. To summarize again, it always depends on the subject of investigation or in simpler terms the thing that we are interested in, what the statistical units are and therefore what a statistical population consists of. The same holds true for statistical attributes and the values depend on what attributes we have chosen. And these are the things that need to be considered carefully by the person doing the investigation so that the statistical methods can be applied properly. But there is always the same structure which includes statistical units, population, attributes and values. That was my explanation of the terms population, statistical unit, attribute and value. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.